to this panel session uh, about Media Lab Madrid Archive, Preserving the Memory, Tracing, Tras, Tras Disciplinary Media Art Practices. Media Lab Prado is a huge project uh, here in Spain. <laughs> Everybody in the, in the network is aware of the meaning of this space uh, uh, and is grateful about all the connection and the possibility that this space brought to us during a lot of time. Uh, here we have with uh, Raquel Cairols, uh, Raul Gomez, and also with Karen, uh, Karin Ol, 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 sorry, <laughs> Olenschlager, that is, uh, he is not here with us. Unfortunately, Raquel will explain and, and Raul will read uh, a text from Karin. And well, I'll leave you to this fantastic work about the, the archive uh, you work on for so many times. Okay, so please, yeah. it's up to you. Uh, thank you, Susana. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Raquel Cairos Mateo, uh, researcher in art and new media and creativity. Uh, Karin Oleslegger, cultural manager and creator, Media Lab Madrid. And Beatriz Escribano, a researcher in our new media and art education. And I work together on the content on the concept of this panel. Uh, thank you so much, Raul, uh, for uh, here. Um, um, the first, uh, I would like to say uh, that this year is the 20th anniversary of uh, the, the birth of Media Lab Madrid, and we believe that this is the best tribute we can pay. It's very, very exciting uh, to be here today. Um, sorry. Project Cray by Karin Oleslegger and Luis Rico. I would have been very happy if Karin had been here today. She would have loved it too. Also, uh, Beatriz Escribano both and half send a text and video that will be say later. Uh, if we have this collection today, it's, if it's preserved, it is because Karin Oleslegger has preserved it in over the last 20 years, uh, not a public institution. The collection has gone wherever Karin has gone, wherever she lived. The creation of Media Lab Madrid Archive arises from the need to contribute to the preservation of transdisciplinary media and art practice, the shaping of the new narrative relay to an extent media ideology. In the context of the project, Media Lab Madrid is as a model of transversal laboratory, art, science, technology, society, and sustainability for the digital alien within the call for social science and humanities of the Comunidad de Madrid, uh, co-financed with the European Social Fund. The project uh, has been coordinated by me, together with a growth of research, uh, of research uh, from the different universities, with the permanent support of Karin Oleslegger. Thank you, Karin Oleslegger. Um, Uh, the challenge uh, was to create open, dynamic, and relation archive structure involved to convey the relationship among biological, social, technological, and cultural system, and pro proposing an extension and arrangement the concept terminology of media art. Not only media art, but from the disciplinary nature of media art practice developed at media Lad Madrid. Um, the creation of, um, uh, of this archive generates multiple debates with, uh, with folks on four main homes. Archives uh, versus collection, archive as memory, uh, 
contribution uh, to the transdisciplinary media art archaeology, beyond media art archaeology and thesaurus, disseminating and transmitting transdisciplinary media art practice. A collection uh, is a term more closely attached to physical artwork and projects, whereas an archive is a concept more related to the documentation of the process and the document and documentation generated around an activity. And the presently, what the Media Lab Madrid Archive is all about. We could say that the central difference corresponds to a paradigm shift that focus on the production experience and knowledge related to different types of collaborate and participatory process. Uh, now, uh, we are uh, going to listen in on the reflection Karin has uh, sent his uh, following text uh, about the background of Media Lab Madrid. Thank you, Raquel. Well, uh, before reading to us the current standards, I'd like to present myself. My name is Raul Gomez Hernandez. I'm a PhD candidate in audiovisual communication at Complutense University of Madrid. Um, I'm under the co-supervision of Raquel Carreol, Mateo, and Francisco Arrezoro Lorenzo, uh, working on new ways of digital uh, heritage education resources and how to engage uh, uh, young people with this uh, transdisciplinary approach of Med Media Lab Madrid and how our science and technology could be the way to, to work together and to engage this, this public. In, in this way, uh, I really, uh, I, I'm really grateful to, to be here uh, re representing what Karen uh, want to say and what they want to, to express. So before talking about uh, Madrid, Media Lab Madrid Archive, I would like to introduce some of the fundamental ideas and functions that characterize the Media Lab Madrid Archer between 2002 and 2006. Therefore, I will start with a little flashback to 1942. At that time, the idea of connecting biological and technological systems was born and developed by American mathematician and father of cybernetics, Nover Vayner together with the Mexican physics and physiologist Arturo Rosenbluth. Through this research, did not achieve results applicable at that time. 60 years later, this seminal idea has led to the final decoding of the Human Genome Project, which started in 1990. So you can imagine the impact the discovery had for humankind. And this was the concrete context in which MLM was born with an aim to contribute to a deeper understanding of the hiding connections among different systems, contributing to a broader participation in the articulation of other kinds of realities. But what kind of realities were we talking about? The classical Cartesian wall is one that is tangible and measurable. We thought it was time to go beyond this dualistic thinking. Instead, we encourage an approach to quantum principles we consider them to be one of the essential scientific pillars of digital culture, in which the center could be, become peripheral, the inside could be merged with the outside, the top with the bottom. Macroscopic dimension with nanometric scales, and, forth, and so forth, with all those intermediate states or potentialities of becoming, as David Palm says, this is presently one of the great values that characterize digital art. It's multiple, simultaneous, and intervenient process, the interdependencies in constant flow and transformation. It has open structures of participation, collaboration, and coevolution, in which the whole is more than the sum of its parts. In the digital world, the distinction is no longer a bipolarity of either or. The wall of the small particles is instead one of both. And the latter correspond with Werner 
Heisenwenger, uncertainty principle, Niels Bohr, complementary principle, as well as the quantum physicist Erwin Schrödinger, conceptual model of the simultaneously living and dead cat. Heisenberg student Hans Peter Thur once said, Thin fell temporally determined mechanism reality turn out to be potentiality and individual material temporality essential and determined network of relationships. Relationships that determine only probabilities, differentiate capacity potency for a material energetic realization. A clear sample and a starting point in our case was safe from the everything flows to everything is flow. The concept of fluid dynamics was the title and the common denominator of a whole of series scientific presentation and artistic projects of the International Festival of Art, Science and Technology at the Conde Duque Cultural Center. The project was convinced by Luis Rico and by me to continue with the second edition of Cybervision. The first one was held at the URGC University in 1999. In 2002, fluid dynamics was carried out in collaboration with, the tour with Dr. Federico Moran, direc director of the second winter cycle of science and technology at the Complutense University of Madrid. This allows to work from the very beginning with well-known artists, scientists, technologists, and other actors in a public cultural center. Beyond the festival, part of the agreement with the Conte Duque was to create a permanent infra infrastructure and a program of research and development, training and production through the year, open to artists, science and technologies from all fields of knowledge. During the opening of the Media Lab Madrid program, among the numerous activities, I would like to highlight the first European meeting of Media Labs and the start of a series of workshops with Daniel Gar Garcia Andujar, initiated with the slogan, Technologies to the People take the reins. Quite a declaration of principles. Medellab Madrid was not only devoted to media art. We tried to go beyond the media. Our starting points were the hidden connections among different biological, social, cultural and techno-scientific systems. We want not only to transmit and to learn about them, but we also wanted to be part of their development. We wanted to be part of the process. Therefore, in Madrid, we need a public space where this process could be take place at the ages of different fields of knowledge, both formal and non-formal ones. We wanted to go beyond disciplines. Our main goal was not to algorithm or machine, but rather an impact of algorithm and machines on the construction of identities and relationships, or in the construction of perception of our realities. That is the impact of hardware and software on our political, social, economic, and cultural lives. Media Lab Madrid differs substantially from its historical antecedents. Among them were the first art science collaboration at the Computer Laboratory at the University of Madrid in the late 60s. Artists run a spaces related to techno-scientific collaborations, safe managed by Fluxox artists and engineers in the US and Europe during the 70s and Meet Lab since 1985. The Computer Lab Madrid, for example, belonged to a historical moment when computers were the size of a wardrobe with restricted access. The machines were relatively slow, complex, and not user-friendly. They bore no resemblance to later PCs and laptops, and the exclusivity of the university environment at that time was in no way comparable to the open, inclusive environment of a public cultural center, such as the Conde Duque is. As for MITLAB, launched in 1985, at the height of the boom and expansion of the hardware and software industry, its spare of action was linked to an exclusive environment of university business collaboration for research and development of new applications and products for the emerging digital market. In contrast, the Media Lab Madrid was born 50 years later at a public cultural institution. It was inclusive in terms of promoting not only access to emerging knowledge of transdisciplinary culture, but also critical and creative thinking and use of media through an extensive program of training, research, productions, and exhibitions of all kinds. We were the first to introduce Arduino in Spain 
we were working with solar kitchens or data visualization of echolocation process. We were introducing processing while we were talking about communication and evolution. And we were collaborating closely with Lynn Margulis, stepping deeper into symbiotic and symbiogenetic processes, bringing the concept from natural to soil science, and so on. Additional open hardware and software applications were experienced for the first time in a public culture institution, talking about copyleft and other new concepts related to experimental, artistic, and social projects of all kinds, upcoming analog and digital activities, and so on. While the exhibition space was transformed into a hack lab, remember Daniel Garcia Andujar, installation of an individual citizen republic project, or Barcelona and Madrid Wireless, the group Platonic, propose environments like the bank of a common knowledge used by visitors for a real sense change of experience. Artists like Ursula Dam, Eduardo Kak, Agueda Simon, and many other involve the visitor for the first time in interactive real-time experience and participations. In our time, the artistic project of Middle of Madrid spread through the squares and streets of the city. Some examples include participatory free calls from a motor home installation, De Parte de Guien, by Josef Maria Martin, and the sentences of Gianni Holzer, occupied the let or previous, previous tracks at time during the city. Between 2002 and 2006, research and developing collaboration involving the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, the Lanzarote, Biodiversity Observatory or the Protein Design Group of the National Center of Biotechnology in both artists and science in equal parts and yield some great results even beyond our borders. In sum, at the height of the Human Genome Project in 2002, at the middle of Madrid, we recognized that nothing could move forward without the connection between biological, social, technological, and cultural systems. We realized that science and technology are part of our contemporary culture, while art and humanities contribute to the continued improvement of critical and creativity thinking in order to participate and collaborate in the evolutionary process of society and the multiple challenges of complex realities. While it's true that the concentration of techno-scientific, media and economic power now dominates the global stage, that is all the more reason for cultural and educational education to have made a much stronger commitment to implement this type of laboratory to raise awareness and empower citizens in the face of an advance of the digital era. In any case, since the Complutense University of Madrid was one of the active participants in the setting of the Metal of Madrid, we will leave it in their hands to preserve and share the experience and knowledge of the pioneering years of the Media Lab Madrid. We are grateful that Archivo General of Complutense have taken in, organized and digitized a large part of the legacy, thanks to the university of Dr. Raquel Carreols, the main promoter of the research project Media Lab Archive. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Raul. Uh, very, very interesting reflection about the uh, background Media Lab Madrid. Uh, but um, the media art, uh, other challenges, other focus, other question uh, about the Saurus. Uh, what we can uh, we say about the Sauro uh, media, um, media art? Beatriz Escribano gives us her, her reflection in the following video. The management, enhancement, and problems on the development of Media Lab Madrid Archive are not only in line with the process of preserving and disseminating all the material generated during the years of Media Lab Madrid, but doing it, taking into account the research, works, and projects in the international context around the keywords of media art, collections and archives, media archaeology, and digital creating. 
To recognize the value of this heritage of the Media Lab Madrid Archive, its preservation and accessibility for those who want to know the true history of media art in Spain, it is necessary to use new methodological tools adapted to the new features in art, to the relationship established by Media Lab Madrid, art plus science plus technology and society. There is a need for a method that allows digging into the past with the basis and theoretical thinking in the present. One of these tools is the media archaeology, which contextualizes Media Lab Madrid in the present to study a recent past and try to establish common lines with today. The result of its use is a critical consideration of the work done at Media Lab Madrid an historiographical and artistic reflection that plays in the line of media art. Media archaeology is the method of looking and refusing linear genesis. In fact, it is used to evaluate these disregarded works by the use of an archaic historiography. To form the basis of the archive, it must be grounded on a compilation of primary information and documentation sources, other type of documents, and the analysis of its contents. During the process of designing the database, the choice of the terminology answered to the concept of a dynamic open archive, one that is capable of carrying the transdisciplinary connections among organic, social, technological, and cultural systems expanded the terminologies of media art. To work on the Media Lab Madrid Archive, it was taken into account, and as an example, the work by the Archive of Digital Art at the University of Krems in Austria. The Archive of Digital Art was established as a collective project in collaboration with artists, researchers, and international media institutions for a sustainable exchange between artists, experts, and users. It is an open access database for Media Lab Madrid archive is one of the best example at this moment because it is built on the technical and functional basis of the most important media archives or databases, such as the archive of virtual art. Also the collection of the Daniel Langlois Foundation for Art, Science and Technology, which aims to further human knowledge by supporting artistic, scientific, and technological research. The foundation collections cover the trends and practices that have emerged in electronic and media arts from the early 60s to today. The collections contain traditional books, catalog, TV rooms, and other digital materials, videotapes, films, and slides. Or, for example, Resume Art Bates, an archive of digital born artworks where there are external links to works of art maintained by artists or archivated copies hosted on the Resume infrastructure. It is a digital archive that includes online works, software for artists, video games, poetry, electronic literature, and moving images. The B2, B2 archive, which covers overall electronic art and unstable media. Also, Netaspunk archive, Media Kunstnet, and the projects by Ludin Bothman Institute Media Art Research in Linz. On the one hand, for Media Lab Madrid projects, the archive of digital art is also an example because it is the first archive in which scholars and artists work together. So in this sense, the advantage is that it is a network built by the same artists and scholars, or artists and academics who are building the present of art right now. And also the information can be changed in real time. The disadvantage is that the archive revolves around the artists. That is, it is only possible to enter or introduce, for example, exhibitions or catalog in the archive, but only if some of the artists are in this archive. 
On the other hand, another of the big works of the archive of digital art is the development of the thesaurus to index and archive the works. There is a solution for the documentation, indexing and research on media art, and the frame of vocabulary that Media Lab Madrid is using in its archive. The interactive archive and Meta Thesaurus for Media Art Research has been developed as an innovative strategy for archiving, with terms that relate the practices of media art to those of traditional art. The Thesaurus objectives are linking research in new media art and art history, establish a point for future research, and expand the vocabulary. The Thesaurus establishes a framework that allows the classification of documents and work with the keywords aesthetic, genre, subject, and technology. The aesthetic category refers to a broad scope of terms expanding from phenomenological observations such as immaterial to ontological qualities such as site-specific. Genre means the type or category of art, and it denotes the content or topic, for example, game art or telematic art. Subjects include iconographic terms established in art history and media art histories. The subject category includes 13 subcategories, for example, art and visual culture, body and human, media and communication, nature and environment, among others. And finally, technology incorporates interface, display, hardware, and software. The proposal of Media Land Madrid Archive is the use of this established and complete thesaurus that reflects the innovation that this center produced in the interrelationship between art, science, technology, and society. Um, uh, we have uh, used, um, uh, we have uh, application the Ada Thesaurus, uh, the Thesaurus Oliver Grau. It's very difficult, Thesaurus uh, Media Art. Mm. Now, uh, the last topic of discussion is uh, to disseminate and transmit uh, media art. Uh, the action of media art practice is our history book uh, and the apparent la uh, lack of the institutional interest in interdisciplinary digital art and cultural means. Uh, for now, and a certain lack of the legitimation of this kind of artist practice. The creation of the Media Lab Madrid Archive is proposed as a contribution to the history of transdisciplinary media art practice and to face the challenges of obsolescence and preservation of digital. Questions. Uh, in the history art of artist creation, where is the history, uh, the history of uh, new media? Uh, does the history of new media have institutional legitimation? How do we resolve the obsolescence of digital? So, uh, what was the process for the creation of Media Lab Madrid Archive? Creation of Media Lab Madrid Archive, creation of Media Lab Madrid database, and creation of Media Lab Madrid uh, website. Now, is a uh, story creation media Lab madrid archive
media lab no dice que hay. So, uh, building the Media Lab Madrid Archive as a contribution to the interdisciplinary media art practice also involves a uh, central duty uh, to the progress, process of dissemination and transmission, uh, which involves generating narratives about, with the genes, uh, genesis of interdisciplinary media arts. The creation of database uh, and the website at is its main intention to contributing to the need for, uh, uh, pardon, contributed to the both broad and academic audience. The object is the rest, uh, the collaborative memory and to understand this process as fundamental for it to become part. It is all right on the story of interdisciplinary practice and the history of contemporary art. Uh, now we are going to preview database and three videos. Mm, database, this uh, three parts, document, person, projects, and, t and activity. Uh, many artists um, today uh, in ICEA um, were pioneer artists uh, Media Lab Madrid Archive. Project Banquete 08, eh, Diego Díaz y Clara Bob. Presentation and eh, this eh, Project Observatorio. Bueno, pues nuestro proyecto que presentamos aquí en esta exposición se llama Observatorio y básicamente es un observatorio de redes wifi, de las redes inalámbricas de acceso a internet que hay en la, en la ciudad de Gijón. Entonces, la pieza está compuesta de dos partes. Una parte está en la torre de la laboral y la otra en la sala expositiva. En la torre de la laboral está el observatorio en sí, que es una especie de catalejo o de periscopio que hemos creado para la ocasión y que está compuesto por una antena eh, wifi, pero, pero esta antena tiene la característica de que es unidireccional, abre 30 grados y puede capturar las redes que están a varios kilómetros de distancia de ella. Y también tiene una cámara y una pantalla, entonces de tal manera que el visitante en la pantalla puede ver a tiempo real la cámara, lo que está grabando, que también tiene una, una lente, un teleobjetivo, y entonces sobrepuesto a esa superpuesto a esa imagen tiene las redes wifi que en ese ángulo la antena va captando entonces la estructura puede girar sobre sí misma tiene una rótula y entonces eh, pueden visualizar en los 180 grados del panorama que, que cubrimos en el cual se ve todo Gijón toda la ciudad y también se ve el mar entonces pueden ir viendo las distintas redes también con los nombres de las redes y también saber si la red está abierta o cerrada bueno la idea era hacer como los la torre de la laboral es un mirador público, ¿no? turístico, donde viene la gente porque tiene unas una vistas, ofrece unas vistas muy buenas de la ciudad, impresionante. Y la idea era, la idea era crear una, pues igual que en, otra, en otros sitios parecidos puedes usar un telescopio y ver ese paisaje, pues ver un nuevo paisaje real de la ciudad, que la ciudad ya no es solamente ese paisaje de la naturaleza y la arquitectura de la ciudad, sino algo más, ¿no? que también hay como otras capas, que en este caso lo que estamos representando es la información de las redes inalámbricas ¿no? y que están ahí y que componen también el paisaje. ¿no? Y bueno, la experiencia es parecida, subir al mirador y ver esa, esa nueva configuración, esa nueva cartografía de la ciudad de Gijón. ¿no? Uh -huh. Pero luego, por otro lado, la pieza también lo que tiene es que este observatorio, que está este, eh, 
eh, que está en la, en, la, en la torre, cuando encuentra una red que está abierta, intenta conectarse a ella. Y una vez que lo ha conseguido, envía a través de esa red información a la sala expositiva. En la sala expositiva tenemos un display de una videoproyección en la cual los visitantes pueden ver eh, la representación gráfica de, de esas redes que el observatorio ha captado desde la torre y ha enviado a la sala expositiva y también pueden ver las imágenes que el observatorio está mandando en ese momento o que ha mandado anteriormente. Pueden ver esa representación del panorama de la ciudad de Gijón. Videos, eh, Pau Alcina, <laughs> presentation Pau Alcina, eh, Arn Oders y en de Medialab Madrid. Mm, one moment. Pau Alcina, heterotopías globales. de estética en la Facultad de Humanidades y trabaja en, en un ámbito que, que es similar al, al, al ámbito en el que, que trabajamos en el que es la confluencia entre arte, ciencia y tecnología. ¿no? Todas sus investigaciones y los proyectos en los que ha trabajado eh, han sido relacionados con esta, con esta sección. ¿no? Eh, bueno, sí quería mencionar eh, dos creo que son interesantes, además eh, creo que va a hacer un recorrido sobre, sobre, toda, esta, sobre to, toda su trayectoria ¿no? y son eh, él es, él es eh, asesor en el consejo editorial del de proyecto LAS de la revista Leonardo que es un archivo de, de, de todas las tesis que se han publicado de los trabajos de doctorado y de máster que se han publicado sobre el este tema de la ciencia y tecnología y luego otro de los responsables también de la, de la universidad en, en la UOC, el responsable de eh, ACNOS, no sé, eh, que es eh, Bien, en principio mm, uh, estoy encantado de estar aquí en el la cantidad de actividades que, Marcos me estaba explicando la cantidad de actividades que hacéis y que eh, desde Barcelona vamos viendo cómo nos van llegando las actividades que vais haciendo. Uh, y nos parecen, a mí me parecen muy, muy, muy interesantes. Bien, yo explicaré un poquito uh, lo, que es, lo que estoy haciendo en la, en la Universidad Oberta de Cataluña, que es una universidad un tanto peculiar, en cuanto tiene un modelo pues, diferente eh, respecto a la que se supone que es una universidad. Y por ello mismo, uh, esta diferencia nos ha permitido pues, hacer uh, experimentos y proyectos transversales, como es el caso de de Arnodes, ¿no? Y... Sí. Eh, tú, la pieza que presentas aquí, eh, ¿me puedes hablar un poco de ella? De ¿Cómo funciona? ¿En qué consiste? La que presento en esta exposición se llama José, un robot autista. Y es un robot que tiene problemas de comunicación con su entorno y con los usuarios. Trabajamos sobre el concepto de interacción y de comunicación en entornos abiertos con público. Y en este caso concreto, el robot lo que tiene son diferentes niveles de problemas de interacción con este público que asiste y en el cual está presente. ¿La interacción en qué, en qué consiste con el público? 
La interacción consiste en que el robot tiene diferentes niveles de angustia existencial. Entonces tiene un nivel primario con el cual se mueve y reacciona con el público buscando una afectividad y un contacto directo. Pero en el caso que haya demasiado público o que el público se acerca demasiado al espacio físico del robot, el robot reacciona huyendo de este público y dando vueltas sobre sí mismo como un trombo. En cada uno de estos niveles de interacción, en estos niveles existenciales de agobio y de angustia, el robot tiene diferentes movimientos y tiene diferentes luces de sonidos y eh, diferentes comportamientos. El robot dispone de tres sensores diferentes. Tiene dos sensores de infrarrojo, que son los que permiten realizar un seguimiento de las personas, porque de, discriminan la zona calórica de las personas, y tiene un sensor de ultrasonido. Entonces, con los sensores de, de infrarrojo lo que hacemos es hacer el seguimiento de estas personas, y con el sensor de ultrasonido es cuando el robot se siente, está completamente rodeado. Entonces, llegamos al nivel máximo, como comentábamos anteriormente, de agobio existencial. Conjuntamente con estos sensores disponemos de una cámara, que la cámara lo que hace es mostrar el, es el espacio interior del robot, es decir, en qué momento se encuentra el robot o cómo se siente el robot. Y igualmente también tenemos eh, una programación con, con pure data que lo que hace es discriminar eh, cómo se siente el robot en este momento y según se va mostrando o se va agobiando más, se van produciendo una serie de efectos visuales. ¿Cómo son estos efectos visuales? Los efectos visuales queremos mostrar en un primer momento eh, lo que sería una especie como de ruido. Es decir, el robot no tiene una visión directa de, de formato cámara, sino lo que está haciendo el robot es mostrar de alguna manera una interacción a través del espacio. En un segundo momento, esta visión, el efecto lo que produce son diferentes cuadros. Entonces es como pixelizar toda la imagen, sería como el robot de alguna manera su parte interior se, se ve más máquina, es decir, lo que ve exteriormente es más máquina. Y el último sería una mezcla de estos dos con un, eh, un efecto que llamamos efecto de agua, en el cual ya sería como que la mente de alguna manera se difumina dentro del espacio. Eh... Uh, the videos are linked to the video Vimeo channel. Which for uh, now is private, but uh, be, by the end uh, of the year we'll have permanent support from the General Archive of the Complutense University and will be open to the public. Thank Thank you very much for the presentation, all the videos and the documentation and the great memories you, you. you brought. So there are some questions in the public? Uh, thank you very much for the memories indeed. I produced two of those projects at Laboral, so it's been a journey in the past. Uh, I would like to ask you guys, what's your opinion on how, so now you have the archive at the university and um, I suppose it, it's going to become more and more accessible, not only for researchers, but for anyone that wants to have a look or uh, learn more. Uh, what do you think about the connection between that and the collaborative practices that happen through Media Lab and are still happening nowadays? Is there, is there a plan? Is there, what are your ideas around connecting what was done so long ago, bringing all over those type of collaboration uh, models and methodologies and, and what we can do now in the Media Lab as a citizen lab, no, I suppose. Thank you so much. Well, well uh, now the, the Media Lab Madrid Archive is part of the General Archive of the Complutense University of Madrid because it, is, uh, it was born in this part of the supercomputing uh, uh, lab that the university has and is burning with, with this uh, and what we expected with this connection to bring the archive to the university is to bring uh, to th this initiative and projects that is transdisciplinary and also to bring uh, science, art, technology for society. So now uh, we are preparing thing, uh, uh, projects in this 20th, 20th anniversary to, to work 
on a, uh, this scientific dissemination project with uh, FES FECIT, that is the institution in Spain for science uh, dissemination, where we like to disseminate the principles of creativity and the principles of, uh, of uh, work transdisciplinary to uh, people from secondary and, and high secondary uh, high schools that they like to implement all this knowledge in this in their careers to belong not only in computer or in science uh, the, the, this approach to uh, creativity and, uh, and new media and it's something that we like to do also with ex uh, an exhibition that we like to do with with, with media matador of, with all this thing uh, about uh, how Media Lab Madrid was a pioneer initiative for Europe. So I think that we, we are in, in the way to bring uh, to the society all this capacity that we have and also to open publicly, as Raquel says, uh, the, the archives database to all com communities that they are interested. Uh, and, and I think that is what we have to do from academia to to work with 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 people and with scientists and with citizens to to, to bring uh, all, all this project uh, back together. Uh, the um, uh, the collection, the archive Media Lab Madrid is a collection disrupted. Uh, I, sorry, this routine uh, for collection, for archive, um, uh, university Complutense. Um, but archive, uh, because, because archive uh, university uh, Complutense is a um, collection uh, the century cycle, uh, so it's very, very... <laughs> Uh, but uh, because it's uh, disrupted. Yeah, in, in Complutense, mostly there are 30 museums and collections, yeah. and mostly all there are uh, close to uh, scientific, technic, and all, all, all this kind of heritage, but we have no uh, collection of new media art. And, and I think that it's what uh, Media Lab Madrid Archive in initiative of uh, bringing to university, thanks to uh, Karin Osenleger, to, to have a collection of something that is produced for communities and also that is in the 20th century, 21st century, produced that it's a new heritage that is now more valuable than ever. <laughs> 